Hey guys, this is Lita from Sipnotech and I am here with the Let Echo La S3. Look at this beauty. So I've been playing around with this phone for a while now and I'm really excited to share with you guys the good, the bad, and everything in between. So here's my full review. Let's get started. First off, the S3 feels great in the hand and has a similar design to other high-end devices. It's a sturdy phone at 5.5 inches and the aluminum body is nice and resembles a hybrid between the HTC M9 and the Nexus 6P. Considering its size, the phone is relatively thin and not overly bulky. It's not necessarily mind-blowingly different from other mobile designs, but considering the price point, the S3 certainly earns points here. La Echo also paid attention to certain small details. The bottom features a USB-C port, which phones of this price don't always include. When I first unboxed the device, I was surprised that they had followed Apple and removed the headphone jack. Now, let's move on to the display. The display is just about the same as the LePro 3 at 1080 by 1920 pixels, with 401 ppi and actually has slightly more screen to body ratio than the Pro. The screen quality is relatively good with its IPS display. Colors are cool and true toned. The screen quality, although pretty sharp, doesn't really stand out from the crowd. Watching Netflix, YouTube, viewing pictures, and playing games were enjoyable for the most part, but I wouldn't say this was a good entertainment device. But at sub $250, La Echo can afford to be conservative. As far as performance goes, the La Echo S3 includes a Snapdragon 652 processor and 3 gigabytes of RAM with 32 gigabytes of storage. Although it's quite impressive that such a budget phone can have a decently powered processor, there is one, one flaw that the La Echo La S3 has that derails all the good that is in this phone. And I'll tell you what that is. Next. Sipnotech? Back to our discussion of the biggest flaw of the S3. The Achilles heel for La Echo is, without a doubt, EUI. There is no word to describe it other than it sucks. There's a massive amount of bloatware on this phone as La Echo automatically includes their entire ecosystem from La Vidi to their live feature to La View and so on. I get that La Echo at its root is a media company and there's some interesting videos to view on here with your free temporary subscription, but I just don't know if people here in the US are ready for their ecosystem yet without refined catering to the demographics. EUI also did not have an app drawer like most Chinese brands, but right when we were editing the video, an update did add an app drawer, so at least they are listening and altering for Western audiences. With minimal apps open, the phone moves pretty smoothly across the system, but certain apps that perform fine on similar spec devices, like Snapchat and even Spotify, lagged a lot for me on the S3. Yes, Snapchat sucks on Android, period, but it's at least usable on many other brands. The bottom firing speaker also features Dolby Atmos audio enhancement, which aren't bad, but bottom firing speakers will never be as great as dual front-facing speakers like those on the ZTE Axon 7 I reviewed last year. Every phone should have them. Another aspect of the phone I was relatively disappointed with was the battery. The 3000 milliamp battery should be enough to power through my day, but I often found myself having to charge my phone earlier in the evening or late afternoons. However, if you're not a power user, and if you're not using any intensive apps for too long, the battery should be fine with light use. Quick Charge 3.0 does allow you to boot your phone to 50% within about 30 minutes and get you back up and running. And now onto probably one of my favorite aspects of the phone, and nothing beats this for the price. The S3 packs a 16 megapixel rear sensor with phase detection autofocus and a front 8 megapixel camera. It can also record in 4K, which is very impressive. Photos snap quickly, and focus turned out decent in optimal lighting, 
but in low light performance, it reveals its budget price. I was pretty satisfied with the camera, and when you consider it performed at this level for only $250, you start scratching your head at why we spend upwards of $500 on any phone for their camera. Overall for $250, and very often even less than that, the La Echo Less 3 is definitely a bang for your buck phone. There's a lot of features on here that I'm really happy with, including the camera and the display. But if you're anything like me, you're gonna have trouble with EUI. And even with a launcher, I found it really, really difficult for me to deal with. And I, I really think that until La Echo adapts their software to how we use our phones here in the West, there's a lot of compromises and hesitation to buying this phone, even for the price point that it's offered at. But overall, not bad, Lacko. Not bad at all. If you liked the video, be sure to comment, subscribe, and like. If you didn't like the video, well, you should still subscribe because I'm 100% sure that you're gonna like the content that we produce in the future. Until next time, bye.